Okay, civil unrest, rule with world without rule of law, um, martial law, all of these things are a possibility after the election. Why is that? Um, I believe that um, Donald Trump will win, and I believe that the Democratic Party is the violence, uh, the party of violence. Not everybody, but a lot of people on the Democratic Party. If you look back and compare January 6th to BLM, January 6th, one person was killed. There were, I believe, 32 officers that were killed during the BLM riots. Um, January 6th, one place, BLM riots all over the nation. On one hand, you got thefts, robberies, murders, buildings being burnt down, um, all of this stuff. Uh, what do y'all think if they think they, they got cheated out the election? Or on this hand, they think they got cheated out the election. They peacefully protested and uh, walked through a Capitol building. Um, you know, while the, the vote was being certified. Uh, so, you know, one is definitely more violent than the other. Um, even though the rhetoric will show, oh, these January Sixers, uh, they hurt. And, and who did they hurt? Everybody evacuated. Uh, there's video footage. Tucker Carlson released it with people just walking through. They were being escorted by police. And these people are doing federal crimes. I don't I don't blame Trump for, uh, for uh, pardoning them. Um, but... Let's get to the juicy stuff. Rule without world. Of, I don't. I don't know that uh, the laws won't be, you know, uh, in effect or anything like that. Martial law. I could see if it gets really, really violent. I can see them implementing some type of um, martial law, especially during January six when it's being, uh, you know, they've already started putting up uh, borders and fences and stuff around the uh, the Capitol building and all of that stuff, which they usually do. Um, every election season, even before January 6th, they, they do that because they they fear, you know, that stuff will get violent. They've already started calling in the National Guard and stuff like that. And, side note, Kamala already authorized lethal force on United States citizens. Wow, that's crazy. Could we take on an army? Yes. But do we want to take on an army? No. We don't want to have a Civil War movie type deal where we have to fight against the army. Um... Because A, the army is outgunned by far, but B, why would we want to take on our own our own people, our own troops? Um, these are people that are sent to protect us, not hurt us. You know, uh, protect, not destroy. Um, <clears throat> but I can see them implementing some type of martial law like they did with the COVID uh, the, 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 the <coughs> stuff. Um I can I can totally see that. I can also see another uh, coup breakout where they do implement uh, rule of law and they uh, because I believe the first time was a experiment. I believe that that was they were trying to see how much the control they can get away with without any pushback. And uh, there was little to no pushback really on what they could do and where they could do it. Um, and they used that as a you know as an extreme uh, deterrent basically. If you come outside, people are were scared to death. They're like, if you come outside, you could be hurt, you could be killed, but you could still go to bars, but you can't go to church because the virus doesn't exist after midnight, but at six in the morning to about noon, yeah, you can't do that. Um, yeah, that makes that makes a whole bunch of sense to me. You got to wear the mask, even though, uh-oh, Fauci admitted to Congress, he made it up, made up the social distancing thing because he, he said he had to do something. Anything was better than nothing. Think about this. Why would surgical masks be good in everyday use? <clears throat> they're not. People don't go if there's a quarantine with a surgical mask. They have a whole quarantine outfit with the gas mask with the oxygen tank on the back. Fully sealed suit. Gloves taped. Full yellow. Why would they think that a mask would help? I don't know. I thought the, air, the virus was airborne. <laughs> that's what I thought. I thought it was a contagion. That's just my, like, if we can't cure the flu, what makes I think we're going to cure COVID with our 16 booster shots? I'm just saying. Um, but anyways, uh, I could see them trying to implement some type of martial law because of that or because of two other reasons. Number one, the immigrants get very violent because their funding gets cut off overnight. You're talking about millions of people who are here. They're getting money for... Uh, they're getting gift cards with basically 1200 on them, or not gift cards, um, credit cards with 1200 on there every month. Um, they're getting free food stamps. They're getting WIC. 
they're getting housing assistance. In addition to that, they're getting all the benefits of being an American citizen without actually having to pay taxes and be one. So I could see them riding in the masses. Uh, now, that would actually be a civil I don't know if it would be a civil war technically because they, they live here, but they're not part of here, I guess. I don't know. Y'all let me know in the comments down below. Is that considered civil war? Um, and number two, if there's either another coup and people start resisting and not listening to the government mandates and or suggestions, ordinance suggestions. By the way, keep, pay attention if it's an ordinance or a law. There's a big difference. Um, one you can be jailed for, one you can't. Um, ordinance, you break an ordinance, you could probably be uh, trespassed. And if you come back after being trespassed, then you can be thrown in jail. But if it's a law, you can't really disobey that uh, because you will be uh, fined and or thrown in jail immediately. So um, I could see them trying to redo the coof. And uh, if you disobey, you know, uh, and they know the people, the type that will disobey, 90 percent uh, of people that will disobey probably around this time is conservative, middle leaning uh, uh, Republicans, not really Democrats. Democrats are the, the flock, not the uh, the not the wolves, the sheep, not the wolves, um, the sheeple. Not all, but some. I would say most, not all, but most. <clears throat> I could see them trying to implement that because they know who will disobey. Um, so either they'll have that and then they might do some type of uh, false flag BLM thing where they say, oh, he got shot by the police. Um, they don't show all the footage. They cut out a 20 second clip of somebody getting shot after they pulled a knife or after they killed their girlfriend or something like how they always do. Get people riled up and they be like, damn, that's messed up that they woo woo. And then just like how they did with that chick in the boiling water, she threw the boiling, she tried to throw the boiling water on the uh, the police officer, and they're like, she had her hands up, and then they shot her. Like, yeah, you gotta look really, really, really close, uh, but you definitely see she threw the water. Um, but e anyways, um, I don't understand why people get so upset about stuff like that. Like people are committing crimes and they go to jail, or they get, you know, there's nobody just hands up and they, you know, get shot in the back. Not often. Either they turn around really quick trying to do something or they've already killed somebody or really hurt somebody or something like that. There's like a couple cases of the BLM stuff that was actually true, but most of it is false. The biggest ones, um, George Floyd overdose. Uh, I'm not going to get into all of them, but I know the recent one with the, the chicken in the water. Somebody was giving me shit about that at work. Um, it was like, well, she she called him a devil, and then he shot her point blank. I'm like, did you see he threw the water? She threw the boiling water. I'm like, you know, you can die from boiling water. That's a that's a not a deterrent, but that's a you know um, you can get third degree burns and die from that um, if the water's hot enough, you know. Uh, but anyways, um, I could see them trying to do a BLM like false flag event, whatever. Um, Implementing some coof stuff or the immigrants basically turn overnight and mind you these immigrants man They're in your communities. They're watching what you do. They're watching what you your your, your everyday schedules and stuff I think that would be the biggest threat because you would never know You know when they're looking you would never know how they're gonna hit you nothing like that and they're already here a threat from within is the most deadly threat that the United States can face by far and what I mean by that is, I mean that threats can't really come here. We got we got it on lock, air, sea, land, whatever. The only way that they can come here is illegally through immigrating into here. How would I, if I was a country that was beefing with the United States, and I know they have an open border, I'm going to slowly but surely just keep sending people, sending people, sending people, sending people. And they're going to slowly build up fortresses build up communities of their own, build up stockpiles, build up food reserves, just like we're supposed to have, build up land gardening zones where they can have, you know, and cut off their sales from everybody else and isolate themselves, not paying taxes or nothing on that. And it, all they need is that one call, hey, it's time, boom. Now you got hundreds of thousands of people going against the United States citizens and they're unaware. You know, they can have people suicide bombing, planting car bombs, gas tank bombs, uh, you know, throwing uh, grenades through windows, all of this stuff, and it would happen in an instant, and you would not be prepared. There's no way to prepare. There's no way to see it coming. None of that. All of our big terror attacks have been instant. Nobody saw them coming. Nobody prepared for them. 
nothing. All we can really do is clean up the aftermath, which I hope it never comes to that. But unfortunately, I've seen the writing on the wall. There's always something that happens around election season, and I'm hoping that I'm wrong this time. I'm hoping, I'm hoping, I'm hoping, but it doesn't look like I will be. I, I think there will be something that happens because there's always something that happens every four years. So let me know what y'all think in the comments down below. Like, I'm subscribing. I'm not trying to fear monger or anything like that. I just want to give y'all my honest opinion on what I think might be coming down the pipeline. So stay tuned. Um, watch my video, Five Things That I Think You Should Buy Before Election Season. Start stocking up. Start getting prepared. Get some training, all of that stuff. Stay tuned for more. We got more coming. All right, peace.